Yeah. You know, you know we're, we're buddies. Yes. But you, you got to do the thing right. Can you stand up with yeah, us? Yeah, no, you can. You, you want stand me to, up with oh, us? Okay. So when okay. you introduce us, you got to right. you gotta on, hit on, it. You got to hit it. Ready? Okay. For your longest reigning WWE World Tag Team Champion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. seconds paying attention to anything I do knows that I'm a little bit of a fan of wrestling. So that's why this week we have a special all WWE episode of Open Lane. Now, we're doing a little bit different. We're starting off with the main event. Make some noise for your longest reigning WWE Tag Team Champions of the World, Xavier Woods, Big E, Kofi Kingston, The New Day. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so we're going to jump into some topics of the day and talk about some things. Does that work with you guys? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. All, All right, we'll start here. Last week, Travis Scott announced that he is the executive producer of the NBA 2K19 soundtrack. Now, this is just the latest in a wave of hip-hop heads participating in video games. Last year, you had Drake jumping in the whole Fortnite thing. Artists like Lil Yachty and Logic have never shied away from their gamer love. So I'm going to ask this question. Uh, what's the best hip-hop related video game of all time. Ooh, Def Jam, uh, oh. uh, Def Jam Def Fight Jam. for New York. Easy. Of course. Easy. Yeah, that was my game. Easy. Yeah. Easy. That was my game. Oh, uh, man. In college, we, we spent yeah. hours playing that game. David Banner in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> At the end, you the am I crooked letter, crooked letter, crooked letter, crooked letter, crooked letter, hump your back, hump your back. <laughs> 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 Man, what a great game. Oh. So good. Yo, your juices really get flowing when you start talking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wet. Are you as passionate? God. Are, God. You, <laughs> are, you, are you just as passionate now about gaming as you've always been? I'd say probably more so. Now that you have the successful up, up, down, down, of course. Plug, 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 plug. Ah. My first experience with it, though, is being uh, in the locker room and then just hearing screaming. So you'll oh, just hear screaming. screaming. And I actually think it's a legitimate fight. And I'm like, oh, man, I always knew WWE was crazy. It's going down. And then I run in, and it's like Seth Rollins, half naked, playing a video game, standing up screaming. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you guys are just playing video games. We mean um, just playing video games. It. Just. You know, it's real, bro. It is real. It's it still is real, real to me. It's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> All right, shots were fired during a recent Takashi 6 9 50 Cent music video. Sh shocking, I know. Um, Segway. <laughs> I know. And uh, this online trolling that Takashi has been doing is epic. My question for you guys, Takashi has become an iconic heel in hip-hop. He is the bad guy. It's the character he plays. Yeah. Could you ever see a face turn for Takashi 6 9 and him <laughs> becoming a good guy in hip-hop? I'll start with you, Kofi. He kind of reminds me, like, of us. Don't, so, this don't is compare Kofi's us answer. to 6 9 this is Kofi's no, I'm, no, I'm this just is, saying. This is Kofi's from a, from a look, <laughs> this is Kofi's no, 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 listen, listen, listen. You talk about him being like the heel. So initially, even from, like, these pigtails, right? Like, when we were doing our thing, everyone was like, oh, well, Kofi, you'll never be able to play a heel, you know, because you're always the consummate good guy and this and that. I'm like, okay, well, let me... Put some pig. You, you see a grown man with like pigtails? You never see that. Takashi with his like rainbow hair and everything. That's like, you want to boo that. Big E, you're, you're shaking your head. You have I, a lot to say here. I mean, to each his own. Uh, he's he's not for me. There's always so much just violence surrounding him. The stuff with uh, Chief Keith at LAX. That was a bit much. And and you go, you go tell a man, especially a guy like Chief Keith, you got 48 hours to kill me? 
to shoot me and just be out in the street just thinking it's cool? Come kill me? No, I just want to hear some beats. I just want to hear some trap beats and some rhymes, man. Just drop some rhymes, bro, and go to your big crib and live a good life. Who are some of the names for you guys you think all-time great heels in hip-hop? I don't know. It's I hate to say it. Uh, I feel like uh, Lauren Hill's kind of becoming a big just just because she doesn't just the no shows. I, there's a lot of love for Lauren Hill, but I feel like a lot of people online have turned on Lauren Hill. You don't think Suge Knight's the biggest heel in the history of the game? Uh. Yeah, I mean, I guess I thought artists <laughs> and not actual. I see your point. I see your point. Now you brought, you brought up Lauren Hill. I did. The miseducation of Lauren Hill turns 20 this week. First of all, make some noise. For that classic. Yeah, you, Biggie, you better make noise. Yeah. Wow. I love Lauren Hill. Now, now, hold don't, on. Don't. First of all, what impact did that album have on you guys? And how do you react? You guys are on the road driving together, and doo-wop that thing comes on the radio. Oh I want to know what happens in the car. That's a bop, man. Yeah, it's a bop. That thing, that thing, that thing. Okay. Even from the beginning, though. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Harmoni so where do, you, where do you guys rank that album? I could probably listen to that album at any given time, you know, pretty much from like top to bottom. And then also from a perspective of her talent, even um, her Unplugged MTV album, I loved that album. Well, a lot of know. people checked out on the Unplugged album. I loved it. But, and seeing her like up there playing the guitar and just talking about like real things that are going on in her life. Lauryn Hill, of course, was part of the Fugees. Maybe some people argue the greatest hip hop group of all time. They're not my number one, but they're very, very high. You guys, I think we all would agree, have become one of the great groups of all time hey. in professional wrestling. Hey. Oh. Oh. Who do you guys see greatest hip-hop groups? That means more than two, just like you guys. Who do you see in hip-hop as the greatest groups? Oh. The Woo! I was about Ooh. to say the same thing. The Woo! Yes! The RZA! Yes. The Jizza! Old Dirty Bastard Inspector <laughs> Deck. Come on, man. Yeah. It gets Go no better than the Woo, right? Yeah, I think based on their collective albums, but then there's so many classic solo albums, too. Yeah. Liquid Sword. Well, that's what makes them sort of special, because they kind of get to be called a collective. Yeah. So, like, you can call them a group, but they all are also a collective who put out their own stuff. Yeah. Right. That's so true. It's, so it's hard to compare them to, say, another group that you put out there, like, a tribe called Quest. Yeah. True. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, three uh, main my, my brain is battling between tribe and the people that I pick, De La Soul. De La, De La Soul, Soul, I mean. Okay. Mm. De La Soul. Being from GA and not saying Outcast? Outcast 2, though. Outcast 2. He, yeah, said, he said, said, more said, said more than two. Oh, more than two. Yeah. He did say more than two. I, more than two. I, I say more than duo. How many, it's hard oh, to put okay. out. Right, right. right. How many dudes are in uh, 69 Boys? <laughs> 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 this this, this story is going to relate to you in a way you guys might not expect. Tiana Taylor has dropped out of her co-headlining tour with Jeremiah because she says Jeremiah is a diva. What's really going on here, if you guys want to be honest, is that Tiana has actually become more of the main event than Jeremiah. Have you guys ever had an issue where you're not in the main event match, but you could tell that too many people might be excited to see the new day, oh. and it could rub some people the wrong way? Uh, we just talked about this last week when yeah. he was on the road. Uh, so Big Show, when we were trying to get off the ground, Big Show would say, would pull Kofi aside and say, like legit pull him to like where you are. So we're within <laughs> earshot and say, what are you doing with those two? <laughs> They're bringing you down. You should be in the world title picture. And just, and me, this is at a, a time where it's not like, oh, big show, it's all fun and games. Yeah. Like, we're struggling to get on TV, me and Woods, thinking we're road. about to get fired. Well, you had been a champion. I've been on the road three months doing nothing. So I just came up from developmental, like, oh, everything's shiny and new. I'm so happy to be here, guys. <laughs> and then he's just taking a dump on me, like to my face. And they're, I'm like, hot they're, steaming, they're right though. there. But you know, he came around. Yeah. Was he now? Was he doing that, Kofi? Do you think you obviously had the relationship with him for longer? Oh. Do you think he was doing it intentionally to try to get them going? No, I don't think he cared that they were there no. at all. He was, he, was, he, was, yeah. he was legit concerned for me. You he know? Just, yeah. But yeah, to, no. to his credit, of all the people that didn't say things to our face, said things behind our back, he's the one person who came up to us and said, I was completely wrong. You guys are awesome and you're killing it, and I'm glad that you didn't listen to me. Yeah. He's the only one. Yeah. And he couldn't be more Good right. Man. Now, because I was going to say, you guys don't strike me as the kind of guys who come through the curtain and are like, follow that! Regardless of where we are on the show, we are the main event. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's not right. a question. Hey. <laughs> Make some noise. One time for the new day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now listen, with all the WWE superstars in town, my wife Alexa and I were able to go out on a double date with one of the hottest couples in all of sports entertainment, Rusev and Lana. Take a look at this. Should I start 
pouring people that? water, I feel like. Sure, how nice. <laughs> She's never done that. It's this all is, for the show. Yeah, this is totally no, for the cameras. That's not true. She never offers to just help out. She doesn't well, even know I how just... to open the bottle. That's how she wants to. Uh, after a while, it just becomes a series of false statements that they make. Yeah, all the and, whole time. And, you, and then wow. you become a bad guy if you correct them too often. Right. So you just have to let half of the false statements go. Well, first of all, they're not false. They're true. You just like to contradict. Men like to contradict. So I don't drink water. You drink electrolytes. That gives me a headache because it has so much pre-workout in it. No, it does not. It's yeah. only for hydration. You're how wrong again. So Alexa and I are also in the same field. Alexa's what you do, base, um, baseball, right? Mm -hmm. Right, I work for MLB Network. So she's a sports broadcaster. So you, inter sorry. Please. Just, do you? That's what she does. She cuts you off plenty of times. Please, please. No, no, I let do. me go with the backstory. I talk to her. I, I'll tell you the I, backstory of well, that. I was just about to ask something about her and talk about other people. You're going to get to it anyway. <laughs> Before, she's going to interrupt you about 25,000 times tonight. Okay. But her family, that's how, what yeah. that's what they do. Yeah. One talks, then the other one goes on we, top and on top and on we top. We all overlap each other. And then it said, Mira, why are you why are you so quiet? I'm like, when am I supposed to speak? <laughs> how much do you guys get recognized if you're completely away from wrestling? Uh, quite quite a bit. Yeah, even nowadays in Bulgaria, when I go to vacation, they get more recognition there as well. well. You're famous in Bulgaria, so that doesn't even count. Right. Well, but in Bulgaria, are you like one of the is he like one of the biggest celebrities in Bulgaria? Well, every time we go to Bulgaria and I will like Instagram things, literally all my pictures that are on the front of the newspaper. So everything like they'll bring the newspaper just we're on the all my Instagram pictures. <laughs> that is that's crazy. awesome. Yeah. That's hilarious. And my I love mom that. saves them and then she sends them to us. And I'm and like, yay, we're famous in Bulgaria. But yeah, we get stopped quite often. Yes. So how did you end up like getting your way? in because the wrestling business isn't easy to get into. No, so he followed his dream to Hollywood. Can I answer? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just get really excited because I want to make a movie out of your story. It's so great. We're going to make all the movies, it's don't literally we? A it's literally <laughs> this is the a Hollywood opening of the movie, movie. I'm not right even here. kidding. Yeah, <laughs> so it this is literally a Hollywood movie and it's like Oscar winning. Anyways, uh, you know, work here and there, work a whole bunch of places. Then I was doing a taxi job. I was security at the strip club. I was doing construction and quite a, you know, most of the time I had two or three jobs at a time because I had to, you know, survive. And then. That's a cat I forgot about that. I said it. Okay. And you said it several times. No, I just thought that was like a cool part that you were a taxi cab driver. What is so you're... exciting about the taxi part? Because that's a hard job. Mm -hmm. You just drive a car around, like I do for you for the past five years. So okay, so you, so you're doing all these odd jobs. Yes, and then I go to. Um, I was living in, in uh, Los Angeles, and San Diego, they had a pay-per-view, WWE pay-per-view, like Great American Bash, I think it was 2008. Uh, after leaving the show, I saw a flyer on my car. It says, Professional Wrestling School, blah, 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 San Diego. I was like, oh, great. You know, it's only a two-hour drive. I'll make the drive and start learning what I actually came to America to do. So how did you guys meet? We met. Hold on, I'm telling the story because it's so short, and you'll take forever. <laughs> he was a DJ, and I went to request a song. So what's your story? So we actually made out right away. That night? That night. Really? What? That is too much information. Not for TV? Oh, we, you just we, said it like such an old man. Well, guess what? I got bad news for you. When you met me, guess what I was? An old man. Yeah. She, I'm like seven years older than her, and she was in college. So I was kind of a creep. So you were in college, and you were like 25? 25, yeah. But he had already graduated, and he came back to DJ for that was chicks, like especially like me. No, OK, stop it. First of all, if that was my goal, I did, up until finding my wife, I did terrible. I did not do well with, girl, with the college girls when I was DJing. But that's what I want to hear, right? Whether it's true or not. No, it's true. I, I, if, I think if you're you, you should be embarrassed. You were the first one who fell for it. No, no, I'd rather hear that you slept with a lot of women and then I met you. That's the ideal scenario. I feel scenario. like it would make you feel like you got a catch instead of like some weirdo who couldn't pull one college girl. You know how easy so it is to get like, girls when DJing? <laughs> this is literally reminds me of us. Can I tell you just a random fact about Lana? That I am a huge fan of your theme song. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she loves hearing this. Oh my gosh. Wait, why? Why do you? Well, no, because you're a hip hop fan, and um, my inspiration was Don't Sweat the Technique. By Eric B. and Rakim? Wow. Are you, why are you a fan of Don't Sweat the Technique? Just... Well, I used to break dance. I'm, I'm a I was a professional dancer. <laughs> That's his version of waving. He does that. But the, yeah, all but the, the thing time. about That's dance, this is what. What, to impersonate her? That's all you do. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That's but that's, really but that's, that's the thing that. about the, the thing about dance that I always say is Excuse like me. it brings people together. It's like let's have a party. Well, speaking of coming together, I just want to say uh, cheers to everyone. So to, to us getting to know yeah. each other tonight. Yeah. This was a great yes. double date. That's awesome. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers. We should do this again. Yeah, we yeah, should. should. Well, we're just have a crush. We're just have a crush. Let's have cheers. Yes, and I
tonight is a former WWE and NXT Women's Champion, and dare I say, future WWE Women's Champion again, but she will always, no matter what, be the boss. Yeah. Give it up for Sasha Banks. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, Sasha. Thank you for having me. I look so crazy. Why? What? I <laughs> I bet I feel cool too. Is this Alicia Fox inspired? This hat? it is. It's so I was on a boat earlier, drove it. I was the captain, so I'm like, why not just wear this captain hat all day? This well, is I feel really cool. And you're already a boss, so it's a bossish hat. It's an outfit. It's a look. Um, I look good. So when did it start? When did like the obsession begin? So the obsession started when I was ten. I was just clicking through channels, and next thing you know, I see wrestling. I was like, what is this? And then since that day, every single week. WWE. It WWE. was forever. It was forever. So, what was it like? What was what were you like in high school? I went to online school. Why didn't you go to regular school? Um, so it started because I have a brother with disabilities, and he was getting abused in school. We were living in a hotel, um, and my mom needed to have a job, so I was like, "All right, I will quit regular school and just stay at home and be with my brother, so you can have a job." So that from the time you're in middle school through high school. Yeah. You never had the regular school experience. No, where did never your, had a friend. Where, where did your friends come from? I don't have any. You really didn't have friends at all? No. I think you're an enigma. People don't seem to truly know who oh, Sasha yeah. Banks is. <laughs> and don't you think that this background that you talked about though is part of why that is? Absolutely, um, it's a huge part. I feel like for me, when I really started the Sasha Banks character, um, it was really just discovering who I really am and, or was or what I'm doing in life. Um, cause I always felt like I was this good girl, always just following the rules. I want to do the right thing for my mom, my brother, this and that. But all I wanted was wrestling. Like and that did. led to you being one of the best bad guys ever in NXT. Yeah, cause I have a chip on my shoulder. Yes. But that chip on your shoulder really does exist. I still have it. You do still seem to have <laughs> it. And does that create complicated relationships within the locker room at WWE? Why? What, you, what did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I have people I don't like. Well, no, I but, think there are some um, people. That, let me put it this way: there have been well. I'm not gonna push them down the stairs. Right. Well, there have been well documented um, rivalries that you've had that were on camera and also appeared to be off camera. Oh, really? Yeah. The story of you and Alexa Bliss. Uh, the reason I love that story uh -huh. is because to me there seems to be a real life push and pull in your relationship with Alexa. Any accuracy to that? I think I'm really good at what I do. <laughs> Would you like to do more with Alexa? Not really. You think the story's told? I think if they want to have me versus Alexa, they can do that because I can do my job very well. So. But you don't feel like you need more to tell in that story? No. How long can you wait to have a match with Ronda Rousey? Because that has to be, it has to be already in your sights on some level. Um, anytime. I'm ready for her. Especially like knowing her now, like I'm more than happy to have a match with her. I think she's awesome. I think we can make magic together. And uh, I have no, anything bad to say about her. Like when I first found out that she was gonna come, I was just like, oh, we don't need that. I don't need that taking away what we're doing. But she helps so much. She works so hard. She always wants to learn and she loves it and respects it. And you know, and I, I appreciate that. She works really hard, so. And paying off. Yeah, you, you, can, you can see that in the ring. Any sort of dream matches out there that you think could potentially happen? Oh, I pray me versus Trish Stratus. That'd be so cool. If not, then me and Bailey versus Trish Stratus and Lita. Um, Do you and Bailey just sit around nerding out, planning these sorts of matches? I, yeah, we talk a lot about like our, our future and our dreams and what we want. So that's one of our dreams, to have that match. Tell me about Roman Reigns, the, the friend, the, the person. He's so cool. <laughs> Why are you such That's a it. fan of him as a, as a person? Um, Cause you, you can just, you watch him and he can turn a crowd. And I, I'm very confused why people boo him. I can understand because he does get pushed, but so what? It's because he's good. He's so good. And um, you know, when I watch him, I'm just like, ah, oh, I want to be like that. Is there any part of you though, that as a fan, I'm someone who likes him personally and as a, a superstar, but I would still love to see him grab the mic and yell F you and completely turn on everybody. I would, I would love him to go off and just tell the whole world how he really feels, but his time will come when he does that. Um, hey, so you are a fan of music. You even have some music in your blood. So, 
Time to do Digging in the Crates with Sasha Banks. Okay, this segment is called Digging in the Crates. I am a DJ. I will dig through this crate of records. There's some gems in here that I thought you might have some interest in. Cool. So we'll okay. keep it simple to start here. Hey, okay. A classic, the coolest. I can't believe I'm related to him. Um, I didn't grow up with him. Like, people always think, oh, did you go Thanksgiving? Like, I, we didn't meet until I was maybe 11. I went to one of his concerts, and um, then when I was 16, I begged him to take me to WrestleMania. Wait, so at 11, though, you go to the concert, and yeah. someone's like, we're gonna take you backstage and meet your cousin? Yeah, well, I was with my, my birth dad. He took me. So he's your birth dad's uncle. Uncle. Wait, my Over, birth dad's his, his uncle. uncle. Yeah. So he takes you back. He takes me back, and get this, they asked me, an 11 year old to go dance on stage with all these chicks. And I'm like, why would I do that? <laughs> like, why? I'm just trying to picture oh, it. Oh, it's so weird to and me. Were you in, at 11, are you already, you're not in regular school already? No, I was in regular school. So, this, so I was telling everybody, I'm like, I'm related to Snoop Dogg. I'm know. so glad. I brought back shirts for everybody, <laughs> except for my teacher, because he's like, you're not related. And I was like, you're Guess not what? getting a shirt. You know Snoop Dogg's over here. How about this album oh, right so here? so good. So good. Good Kid, Mad City, Kendrick Lamar. Is this, oh. First of all, where does this, among Kendrick albums. That might be my favorite one. This one is like what took him from, you know, obviously people were checking for him with Section 80, yeah. but when Good Kid, Mad City came out, it went to a different level. What, what is it about Kendrick Lamar for you? He speaks to me, he speaks to my soul like wrestling. It's like you can't explain. It just can change my whole mood. And like, if you look on my Twitter, I quote everything from him. He's like, just, ah, oh, so inspiring. How'd you enjoy the concert? I know you went and saw him on the last yeah, tour. Yeah, and then you sent me, like, I could have met him. Right. So mad. I said if you reached uh, out, I would have taken care well, of you. I mean, you sent me that. I was like, why would you even <laughs> say that? Oh, my God, you almost bitch slapped me over her Instagram <laughs> DM. Um, <laughs> hey, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. Make some noise for Sasha Banks, everyone. <laughs> um, big, big thank you to the New Day, Xavier Woods, Big E, Kofi Kingston, of course. My double date from last night, Lana and Rusev. And now, to close it out, one of the illest. Give it up for our guy, A-Rap Music, New York. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Open Late is always open on Complex's YouTube channel, and so are all these amazing shows. Check them out.